My name, as I said, was Paul Hellyer. I'm a former Minister of National Defence for Canada. I served in three governments during a total of 23 and a half years as a Member of Parliament. Although as Minister of National Defence, um, I had sighting reports uh, of UFOs. Uh, I was too busy to be concerned about them at the time because I was trying to unify the Army, Navy and Air Force into a single Canadian Defence Force. And that itself was a kind of uh, battle to the finish. So um, this was not high on my agenda. But it, about 10 years ago, I started getting interested uh, due to a young man from Ottawa sending me material on the subject. I told him I was too busy to read it, but he had confidence that someday I would. He sent me a copy of um, Colonel Corso's book, The Day After Roswell. It took me a while to get around to reading it, but I took it uh, for my summer reading in 2005 and um, was really impressed with what was contained in it. And what I thought to myself is there are huge issues here, huge issues. And the American people and the people of the world have a right to know what's going on because they're part of it. It's not just an isolated thing. And so after confirming the contents of the book with a retired uh, United States Air Force general, I accepted the invitation of Victor Vigiani, uh, who is over here somewhere, and his uh, cohort, uh, Mike Bird, to speak to a symposium at the University of Toronto. And uh, I said, UFOs are as real as the airplanes flying overhead. That gave me the dubious distinction of being the first person of cabinet rank in the G8 group of company, countries uh, to say so unequivocally. <laughs> Since then, I've learned a lot from many sources, including a number of the fantastic witnesses that we have heard these last four days. So they were so outstanding, I was just really blown away with them, uh, the amount of information that was available and I appreciate uh, every single one of them. But because I'm not a ufologist, um, I'm a politician, there are only a few things that I want to add in that particular realm. And first is that about um, in the 1960s sometime, there was a flotilla of UFOs headed south that crossed into NATO territory in Europe, and um, the Commander-in-Chief of uh, the Supreme Allied, Allied uh, Headquarters in Europe uh, was naturally very shaken. Uh, fortunately, or maybe divine providence, before um, the panic button was pushed, the flotilla turned around and headed back north. Uh, obviously, they had thought maybe they were Russian and they were very concerned about it. Anyway, uh, uh, <clears throat> The investigation was launched into this whole subject and uh, a document was prepared which uh, concluded that at least four species had been visiting Earth for thousands of years. And this is my own uh, view at this stage as well. So. Except for that, there are just a couple of um, things that we've talked about that I'd like to refer to. And one uh, was that we were referring to them as they until this morning when Linda Moulton Howe, I think she was the first one, actually named three different species. I have brought my uh, latest book uh, called Light at the End of the Tunnel, a survival plan for the human species as an aid memoir. And... Uh, I name five different uh, species here. I'm aware of uh, more now. As a matter of fact, I saw a document uh, just a few days ago that mentioned 20. Uh, and I think you, Mr. Chairman, were interested in some of the places they might come from. And I have in here Zeta Reticuli, R-E-T-I-C-U-L-I, -E Reticuli, the Pleiades, Orion, and Romita, and the Altair star systems. So uh, I don't think we can any of 
more refer them to them as they because they're not an amorphous mass. <coughs> they are different species and consequently may have different agendas. I don't think we can say that they all have the ag same agenda any more than we could say that the United States, uh, China, and, uh, and Russia have the same ag agenda. Our real interests may be very similar, uh, but as of now, our perceived interests are still uh, quite far apart. One more observation before I begin what I want to say, and that is that we spent quite a bit of time talking about the 66-year-old cadavers, and I was glad to have Linda this morning finally say that there are live ETs on Earth at this present time, and um, at least two of them probably working with the United States government. I, the seventh, the other species that I learned about uh, not too long ago was called the Tall Whites. And uh, this is when Paula Harris uh, broke the story just a few years ago. And through her good offices, I had the chance to talk for about three hours with former Airman Charles Hall and uh, listen to this absolutely fascinating story of uh, how he was working with, first of all, he was scared out of his skin, but after that, when he got to know them, how he was working with, and finally, they became to trust each other and have a good working relationship with the tall whites at the uh, gunnery range at Indian Springs in Nevada. And these tall whites were living on United States Air Force property and working in cooperation with the United States Air Force and sharing technology uh, with them. He wrote a book, incidentally, called Millennial Hospitality. There are four different versions, but uh, Paula says that uh, Millennial Hospitality uh, number two is the best. I think that's the one I read, and it's a, it's a very interesting read uh, if you want to sort of get inside the, the problem of what it's like to bump into these people floating across the, uh, the terrain in the, in the desert. <coughs> well, enough on that for now. My interest is in full disclosure. And uh, I just, my only caveat is I think probably I would say 95 to 98 percent, full disclosure. I know of one or two things that I'm not sure should be in the public domain, at least yet. They will be someday, I'm sure, but not maybe immediately. But just as children survive uh, the idea of the uh, tooth fairy and Santa Claus when they become adult, I think that taxpaying citizens are quite capable of accepting the new and broader reality that we live in a cosmos teeming with life of various sorts. The fact that some other civilizations are more advanced than we are may be humbling, but that could be a necessary step in our survival. <laughs> 